I want to say thank you to all my Patreon supporters and my Twitch subscribers. Join the Guardians, become a member, or become a subscriber on YouTube, Patreon, and help support the channel. All right. Yes. All right. So let's start this over. So have you guys seen this Joe Rogan interview where he talks to a sex neuroscientist? He's talking with her about the scary yet very real future of sex robots. In the interview, they talk about a movie that I absolutely love, Ex Machina, which believe it or not, came out a decade ago. All right, so here's the thing about this. And I know like, it irritates me every time I hear him say Ex Machina. It's Ex Machina, you motherfucker. Um, secondly, 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 um, it... Let's be honest, Oscar Isaac in the motherfucking movie was a fucking incel. And in order to get a woman, he needed to actually build one. <laughs> oh my God. <coughs> and like, yeah, most of most of the women in the his test range were actually sex robots. But yeah, let's let's go ago in 2014 in any case not only does it feature robots tearing up the dance floor with x-wing rebel fighter pilot but at the end of that movie you may be asking yourself would i have turned to the dark side for alicia vikander but getting back to that joe rogan interview yeah it was scary but the comments were even scarier as a single man who doesn't want children who doesn't want a wife a sex robot would be perfect imagine you save up all your money you buy this ai sex bot and it still turns you down and perhaps my favorite any man who's been dragged by their significant you have to be a loser to like your sex robot turns you down like you have to be a loser i'm Okay, so, and I, I was saying it before, I am somebody who is for AI. I really think AI is an awesome thing to actually, for us to eventually come up with. I don't think it will be artificial intelligence unless it's be some disembodied intelligence. And then still, it's just intelligence. It will be no different from uploading a human into the world. But, God damn it, like... I don't know what to say to these people. It's just so fucking stupid. Like, I I made a joke in a video that I still have to release. Um, I don't want to master somebody else. I want to master myself. And before you make the master bait jokes, um, I want to master myself where, you know, things like this, where I'm actually doing art. I'm practicing art. And not just to just to say like, oh yeah, I'm drawing a, a fucking beautiful woman and shit like that, but it's just like at some point you have to master yourself into where you're making it where it's <coughs> I need somebody to control. That's just so fucking I don't understand it. But let's continue other to a store on their day off argued about a duvet cover that they don't even care about and dealt with the silence and cold shoulder on the ride home will find the evolution of a sex bot appealing and gents i'm not here to judge if you like the idea of a fembot hey more power to you but the bigger problem here is the health issue that can't be denied what am i talking about the fact that men especially younger men are lonelier than ever. Seriously, they've measured this. Apparently UCLA has this whole loneliness scale and over 60% of Americans are registering as lonely. And let's break that up because that included both men and women. Now this won't surprise any of us guys here, but when So here's the thing about that. I know, I know when it comes to the... Overall safety of what's been going on. We haven't seen a woman in sale going on a rampage and it's mostly for you know focus on guys but in the end it's a loneliness thing that is happening to everybody and i say that and i keep saying this and like a lot of people say like oh gen z or gen alpha they don't know how to socialize like no us millennials especially our, uh, our older than millennials we just had a place to have sex and when we had sex with people, they kind of stayed around. Now you got to share apartments with like three or four roommates and all this other good shit. And rent, the, the rent is out of control. And yeah, some of it is some people just can't socialize. But I, I'm i sorry. A, a lot of it is just like a lot of people just don't have a place to have an intimate partner or be be with an intimate partner and that's not just sex it's just like do you spend time with like 
your girlfriend while you have a roommate. <coughs> now, I know some people that be like, yeah, yeah, no. <coughs> but still, it's just one of those things where it's just like, not a lot of people have space for an intimate partner. But let's continue. When it comes to measurements of loneliness, men in general are 25% more likely to identify as lonely. And to be clear, I'm not denying that women don't get lonely, but men get lonely more often and have less avenues to deal with it. In general, younger men are more likely to be lonely than older men. So we see millennials and Gen Z being in the danger zone quite a bit. And on top of that, heavy social media users and those that work from home, especially when you work from home more than what you want, all these factors seem to... Okay, so here's the thing. Nobody works from home more than what they want. I'm sorry. That's not a thing. That doesn't happen. <coughs> if everybody can work from home as much as it as much as they want, motherfucking the world be a better place. I get the traditional thing that a lot of people are actually saying. Again, I may, may mention to it. Some people believe that a lot of Gen Z don't. Well, they don't have the social skills that a lot of the older older crowd does but those older crowds don't have the social skills either <laughs> let's be honest they don't and so what happened in a lot of cases is just that some of his bias based on the hey back in my day some of his rose tinted glasses of yeah i i was just the bestest and like, no, it wasn't that. It was just that it was just a different world. And if technology was around the way that it is now for people, your ass will still be as bad as these people that you cr criticize. But let's go. Correlate with somebody feeling loneliness. So all this begs the question, why are we lonely? What's changed in the last 25 years that has created this loneliness epidemic? And what are the solutions, especially the one that no one is talking about? Well, before I get into that, gents, I want to introduce you to today's sponsor, Better. Help. Now, gents, in case you didn't know, BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service, and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30. Wait, wasn't he just complaining about how online are people working from home and shit like that was a bad thing? I, I'm, I'm confused. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just... <sighs> Okay, let's go. I was a licensed and experienced therapist who can help you with a variety of issues. And straight up, gents, I've used their services. Like a lot of you guys, I've had life hit me hard. Years ago, I lost my sister to suicide, and that memory still haunts me and my family. I can tell you it is nice to have a professional that you can speak with. Now, gents, this is the way it works. So you're going to go over to their website. You're going to answer a few questions about your preferences and your needs. The goal here is that BetterHelp wants to correctly match you with the right therapist. Now, once you're matched with your therapist, you can talk to them however you want. You can talk to them via text, phone, chat. You can do a video call. On top of that, you can message your therapist at any time. You schedule the appointments so they fit. Uh, as somebody who's therapy, um, it's probably not good to message your therapist at any time, but I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's yeah. Um, but let, let's go. With your calendar. And if at any time you don't feel comfortable, you want to switch therapists, you can do that at no additional cost. In a nutshell, gents, with BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you get with in-office therapy, but with a therapist that's actually custom picked for you. Plus, better scheduling flexibility at an affordable price. To get started, gents, go to BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash real men, real stuff. Make sure you use this link. I'll put it in the description of today's video. This is going to ensure you get the best deal out there on the web, 10% off. Off your first month if you need professional help use the link in the description of today's video go check all right so i did leave that in there because i'm watching this video and if i'm watching this video I might as well watch his ad um also also um i know better help had a they have have had things where they um they don't seem helpful but i'm gonna say this i'd rather people actually try to see seek out help, help, then not try to get any help at all. And, and again, I know that there is a thing with better help and the whole, but the whole like issue around it and was it really helpful. But again, I would rather people seek out help than um, not, you know, have that revenue. Um, ah, um, not revenue, avenue of help. So yeah, see if you need better help, get better help. 
check them out at BetterHelp. So to start things off, let's address the elephant in the room. The base question, why are men so lonely? Has it always been this way? I would argue there definitely are some old school reasons. By that, I mean, if you go back a thousand years, I think that there were still societal norms as they are nowadays, that it's difficult for a man to express his feelings. I mean, we've come a long way, guys, but there are still expectations that to be a manly man, you got to keep everything inside. Now, I definitely think in certain circles, in certain environments, a man can be somewhat vulnerable. But if you're that guy that's always crying, there are going to be plenty of situations, even in today's modern world, in which you're going to be rejected and you are going to be ridiculed. So does this mean that men have always been lonelier? Well, not exactly. You see, there used to be men's clubs. And I'm not talking about strip joints no i'm talking about organizations okay that was a good one um but no that is true there used to be like more just like clubs where you would go like to be men and i mean like some of them were gay sex clubs let's be honest um where you know it was a reason why the roman holiday salad salinaria was it was right around Christmas time because, you know, they was trying to get their rocks off. But, I mean, like, some of them were just, like, men trying to experience life with other men. And that's always a good thing, right? Right? informal, informal, that supported fraternal and brotherly relationships between other men. How many of these organizations still exist? Some of them have a bad name. Other ones have a great name. But in general, a lot of these clubs have disappeared and many fell out of favor with societal norms. On top of that, the disappearance and effect of religion. Now, some of you guys are thinking, yeah, organized religion, there's nothing good that comes out of it. As a guy growing up Catholic, nobody can deny the negative. But what you can't ignore is the feeling of community in a healthy church, in a healthy congregation, whenever you're a part of it. And with now coming in on 57% of Americans, never or very rarely ever going to... So I get that, and this is why, you know, I'm I'm an atheist myself, and having that camaraderie in a place where you can actually go, um, where it is people who who understand you, that's always a fun thing to do. And um, yeah, no, that can lead to a lot of people feeling out of place. And also, fuck, the suburbs are killing people. Like, just say it. The suburbs are killing people. But let, let's, all right, let's go. The church, the positive effects of religion and community are definitely on the downturn. Another trend, this one modern that we're seeing is making people more and more lonely, is that they are living alone. I know for a lot of my Indian and Pakistani friends, when they come here to the United States, they hear shock at how all of these young people are outside of the family unit. There isn't the whole generational thing where you've got your grandparents living with their grandkids. No, you've got you know people at 18 getting kicked out of the house. Now, I get it. Living on your own, you want the freedom, but you also lose a lot when it comes to the connections that you took for granted in your family. The exception to this, if you're in a toxic family unit, then getting out is a great thing. Oh, yeah. This is also true. Like, um, I'm of the belief that your chosen family is more important than the family that you're just born with. And a lot of people would like to say that, yeah, no, of course, that's, you know, that's fucking awesome. I think that a lot of us choose to live alone and miss out on just miss out on some great things that we can always enjoy out of. And of course, um, just going back to how I said that, you know, a lot of millennial uh, later millennials and a lot of Gen Zers, they don't have any place to sp spend intimate partners. Um, that is still true, especially living to other people and family members. But if you live with a family member and you have a job, at least you got a car. You can at least take, you know, your special someone to a hotel. Anyway, let's go. <laughs> What's up, Miss Keeper? Now, all those things have definitely increased loneliness. But in the last 25 years, it has accelerated to a level never seen before because of technology and the advent of the Internet. So first up, the Internet. What it brought to the forefront was the economic principle of the winner takes all. So if you're not familiar with how the winner takes all in economics, imagine you are a guitar player. You're pretty good. In fact, you're the best in your village. Maybe there's a guy three villages away that plays a little bit better. But for everyone in your town, you are, you're great. You're awesome. Well, the issue with the internet is all of a sudden it introduced everyone in your village to this amazing guitar player out in Southern Tennessee. And this guy's a thousand miles away. And then it gets even worse. Some Italian dude on the other side of the world all of a sudden is grabbing their attention. So this is true. Ironically, as I'm working on art, um, when you are 
when your competition is the whole world, then you, <clears throat> you got to be a little bit even more special. Now, of course, um, this is a false kind of idea because everybody has their own type of benefit of art or benefit of, how do I put it? You have your own style when you're doing shit and it can lead to more ideas than it can lead to limitations. But he's a little bit right here. When you are, I like to say this and a lot of people got kind of like laughed about this shit. The internet didn't bring out more idiots. Every village had its idiot. They can just talk to each other better now. And that's what the internet has done. It allowed every village idiot to talk to every other village idiot. <coughs> and look what we have here. And all of a sudden, your local audience, their expectations have shot up here. And their value, their thoughts of you and your ability, all of a sudden, that has dropped. So what does that have to do with loneliness? Because it's had that same effect in the dating world. 25 years ago, a guy that was on a scale of one to 10, maybe a six, he could reasonably pick up another six, maybe even a seven, sometimes even an eight. Okay, so I hate this whole idea of judging people by what their number is. No, my number for an eight is, could be wildly different for an eight for you. Shit, this shit is irritating. It's fucking irritating. But uh, that doesn't mean shit. And yeah, you know what? Here's the thing. There have been times where I have literally met people that live a county over or two counties over and they've been great and you couldn't have that in the old days and that doesn't mean that like oh my god it's just fucking weird this whole thing about the internet is close to dating market first dating shouldn't be a market it shouldn't be a marketplace it should be a motherfucking bazaar because that's all it is it's a fucking bazaar because it's all fucking bizarre i'm i'm tripping all right let's go if he dressed well and got everything lined up. 200 years ago, people would usually marry somebody within 15 miles of where they live. 50 years ago, that number had gone up, but still people were usually dating in smaller pools and they would usually, you would find that if someone's an eight, they would hook up with another eight. If you were a two, then you would hook up with another two. Now, I'm not gonna get into the details of how that measurement works, but what I wanna point out is a full-on population. Let's say we have 10 on one side and 10 on the other. Usually you would get about eight to nine pretty good matches. The problem now with the winner take all in dating is that all the women are shooting for the giga chat. You know what I'm talking about? This. So are all the men. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Shut the fuck up. Oh, my God. This is some bullshit. Everybody does it. Fuck. Damn it. Everybody fucking does it. None of these motherfucking incel motherfuckers would, would want to date somebody they think that looks old or is overweight. No, and that's the fuck their problem. The problem is they have shallow how disease. And if you don't know what shallow how disease, watch the movie. And the fact is, dude, like, and I've said this to, to women that I'm attracted to and I fuck with and I date and all that other good shit. Sometimes when people consider conventionally attractive, they're fucking ugly on the inside. And all they're good for is to look at. And that shit is just, ah. Fuck, shut the fuck up. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm tripping. All right, let, let's go, let's go. This guy has everything. He's making seven figures. He's got a seven inch <laughs> He's seven feet tall and he's got seven pack abs. Wait, doesn't everybody have a seven inch dick? <clears throat> what, what, what? Doesn't everybody? I mean like, especially if it's cold, it's only seven inches. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. All right, let's go. And not only did technology ruin dating, let's look at our home work-life balance. The reality is most of us are telecommuting. We're working from home. We actually never seem to stop. It's 11 o'clock at night. Who am I kidding? It's two o'clock in the morning and you are still checking work emails. You're constantly distracted by updates, notification, tons of information coming. Turn that shit off. You don't have to respond to it. I'm sorry. Like, fuck. I remember having this conversation with like an old manager from one of my jobs. And I was like, you know, in France, they make it illegal for you have to answer your because you're saying, well, after I give here, I always have to be constantly on my phone. It's like, no, you don't. They make it illegal to fucking have to work after like seven, answer your phones. That is your time to be at home with your with whatever the fuck you want. Oh, but if it if it was so good in France, why don't you live there? 
And I looked at him like, you are a 52-year-old black man talking about America is the best country. You need to motherfucking rethink what you're just motherfucking saying. You are 52 and a black man and talked about how you had to struggle to make sure you get respect. But America's the best country? Get the fuck out of here. And I was like, yeah, no, you lost in the sauce, dog. But let's go. Ian, you're working 60, 70 hours a week, but it doesn't feel like that because you don't feel like you're getting everything done. Now, 30 years ago, you were isolated in a cubicle, but you could at least get up and go to the water cooler and shoot the shit with people. Nowadays, you're isolated in your own home and occasionally, yeah, you get to see people on Zoom, but yeah, it's not the same. And don't even get me started with how our entertainment is making us more lonely. Probably like most of you guys, I think the Red Pill community has some great points. But let's face it, they're going after clicks and that's why they are. No, no, it doesn't. It fucking doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. The Red Pill community is full of former fucking pickup artists or people that want to be pickup artists. That's it. They tell you to get rich, you get a bitch. That's not how that works. You would have that same shitty mentality as if you were poor or if you were rich. The real women don't want a man with a crappy attitude. I'm sorry. If you want to date Instagram models, cool. You better have your bank account lined up. But God damn, it's not that serious. I would rather have a chick that I find attractive, if she conventional beauty or not, but we can sit down, watch motherfucking anime together, watch motherfucking, you know, Netflix or Amazon Prime, and we can talk. Or I can, you know, play video games with her. That's more important than dating an Instagram model. And I'm sorry, too, I have friends that are on Instagram that look as good or better than some of these Instagram models. Yeah, they got a fupa, but that's what you lay your head at when you... I'm, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't finish that sentence. Anyway, let's go. Are taking men and women and they're dividing us. I and mean, seriously, it's like Jerry Springer all over again on a lot of these shows. In case you don't know your history, Jerry Springer and Geraldo, these guys would bring on KKK members, Nazis, and Black Panthers all onto the same show and then be surprised when a fuck. Wait, I I don't. I I one of these things are not like the other. Wait, what? How how do you equivocate KKK, neo-Nazis? And black, oh my, oh, ah, dumbness. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, all right, whew, let's go. Fight broke out. I mean, seriously, what are people thinking on these shows? It's a dumpster fire and we like to watch. So how to become less lonely. And what's the solution I have that nobody seems to be talking about? Well, first up, let's talk about the proven common solutions. I know that doesn't sound exciting, but here's the deal, gents. Get out of your own way and stop thinking that you need to find some secret solution that nobody has talked about because it really isn't that complex. Go out side go out side go out side <coughs> and it's one here so I'm just like yeah secondly Guys, guys, I really need you to understand this one thing. One thing. <sighs> Bathing, showers, deodorant are your friend. Like you, you want you want to feel like you washed yourself in the waters of Lake Minnetonka. You you just want to be clean. You you, you want to be clean. You don't have to have like big expensive um, smelling cologne on. Just smell clean. Have some fragrance on. <coughs> if you're a big guy, you know I'm a big guy, and I take you know two showers a day. You know, you know <coughs> it, it's okay. You know, you you want to smell clean because no no woman wants to be around you if you smell like last week. The only time they want to be around a guy that's sweaty. Is right after he came from the gym, and they like to smell that shit for a few seconds, then hop your ass in the shower. Because once that must starts mixing with normal must, it's a wrap. Go go jump in the shower. Like right after you come from the gym, they love smelling that shit. 
Uh, get get a loofah. Actually, get a loofah. You can't wash everything with the loofah, but get a loofah. Kind of like exfoliate the skin. Uh, all right. Uh, so we got two rules: go outside, wash your ass, and um. Oh yeah. You may deserve human motherfucking contact, but you're not entitled to someone's time. And I, I know that, that sounds conflicting, right? You, as a human, may need to socialize with people, but nobody's entitled to give you their time. They volunteer it to you. <laughs> so that 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 that's key. You got to understand, like, oh, if somebody decides to give me my their time, then I will be thankful, and I'm not entitled to it. It it works. It works. And if, if you, look, 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 even if you're not looking, even if you're looking to like fuck somebody, you, you may not get to fuck somebody, but they want to be around you. And that kills that loneliness thing. I mean, like if you want to, you know, you know, you got Rosie, you got Pamela, you know, <laughs> go get you a masturbator. All right, all right let's, let's go. First up, realize and accept that loneliness is an issue. For some of us manly men that still wash our hands with gasoline, this is tough. I mean, seriously, I grew up watching the movie Lone Wolf McQuaid. I wanted to be a lone wolf. But the reality is loneliness isn't good for you. In fact, the negative health impacts of being lonely are very similar to those of obesity, smoking, physical inactivity, and air pollution. Consistently being lonely increases the likelihood of depression, anxiety, and dementia. Next up, can you leverage technology in a positive fashion? I find for me, cleaning up my phone is like taking a shower. I've got to do it like once a month. Somehow notifications slip in. I go through, I turn them all off. I even turn off my phone once I get home. Nowadays, there is no computer at home, although occasionally one to sneak back there. But I constantly am reminding myself again, it's like a shower. I'm like, okay, let's do an audit. Am I spending? All right. So this may sound like a heroin addict saying this shit, but I will admit that I watch TV, and I watch YouTube motherfucking all day. I admit it. I fucking admit it. However, my diet of YouTube and all this other good shit, first of all, I, I, I will never have a diet of just motherfucking red pill bullshit or all this other good bullshit. I will never have a diet of just that shit. Secondly, 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 I watch anime. I mean, like, I know I just mentioned I watch anime, but I watch things that inspire my creative art. Not only just am I doing art, you know, I actually I don't just engulf, engulf myself in just politics all the time. Oh God, I would I would want to I would want to take a swim in Lake Michigan right now if I engulf myself in politics all the time. And I'm not gonna do that. <clears throat> Because I like doing other shit, and I, I kind of go outside, but let, let's go, let's go. Too much time on my phone. I monitor my screen time. In fact, I do this exercise with my kids, but I'm kind of doing it with myself. I ask everyone to look at their screen time. I have to show mine as well. And we talk about what are our goals, what are our ambitions, and is the time, because you can see which apps you were spending time on. Is this aligned with going after your goals? And I find that doing this with a group, with a bunch of younger people, all of a sudden, I've got to ask myself, yeah, I can do a better job. Remember, your phone, your laptop, your technology is there to serve you. In fact, I'm going to double down on this point by asking you, could you take a technology fast at least once a week? If you're not familiar with fasting, that is restraining from something. I know a lot of religions not in the winter i'm gonna be honest with you fuck not in the winter i can't do that again almost like a heroin addict i can't do that in the winter if you ask me to do it in the summertime i'm outside on my bike if you ask me to do that i'm yeah of course like say hey crimson when you wake up in the morning you get 20 minutes of TV to figure out what the weather is, traffic and shit like that. Oh, it's warm outside. I'm on my bike. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to start training for bike to drive. I know they push it back to September. So I'm, I think I'm going to start training for it this year and actually get into it. But yeah, no, but all right, let's go. 
They will fast at various times throughout the year. But are you capable? I mean, because you can do a lot of things, right? Could you turn off your phone, not touch any electronics for 24 hours? I bring this up because a friend of mine, Adam, he's Jewish, and I invited him to a mastermind. And he pointed out, nah, man, you've got it right in the time in which I'm with my family. That's when we celebrate our Sabbath. And there's no electronics during that time period. Now, this got me thinking as a dad that wanted his kids more. I'm like thinking, wow, that's really awesome to have a time period. You know what? You don't need to be religious. I'm not encouraging you to, you know, convert or join a religion. My point, can you make it a ritual? Can you make it a habit so that once a week you are taking a break, that you're logging off? Now, this next one's obvious, but really hard, especially for younger people. And that is to get out and around people. I was talking with my son about this. He's a freshman at the University of Wisconsin, Madison. And he. Wait, what? You have to tip. I guess one of my things that I am glad um, that I saw with my daughter um, when I was a teenager, I actually didn't get out much um, outside of like the school year. Um, and I'm glad that she's more of a social butterfly than I am. Um, but yeah. Um, also, thank goodness she only um, is working on set plays. But um, she was almost a theater kid, and I, I couldn't have that. No, 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 no. My child will never be a theater kid, ever. He agreed that a lot of younger people, they, they just don't want to put themselves out there. They are scared of rejection. Now, as an introvert and a latchkey kid, I can somewhat relate. I remember just growing up and how difficult it was to be in and around other people. I always thought people were judging me. I always thought I was going to get rejected. I was a skinny kid. I mean, I used alcohol as a crutch throughout my first few years in college, pretty much throughout my entire career in undergrad, to be able to be around the ladies to be able to talk to and be who I thought a fun person. And gents, let me be clear. I'm not advocating alcohol, but I am saying, can you actually set something up? Can you create a system so that it's going to force you to show up, to get out there? Can you prepay? To it's called, you know what? I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I do struggle with this myself because one of the things that I, I uh, all right, I don't want pity, but I work for a call center. I work for a customer service call center. And at times, I just want to be like, fuck people. However, I do this thing called drawing and art where I have to go out and because of the time and effort I put in it, sell it. And I go to conventions. By the way, I'm going to be at Peoria Con March 1st through the 3rd um, coming up in the Peoria Civic Center um, at Peoria Con. So if you're in the Peoria area, you can actually come and purchase some of my art and we can actually um talk about different animes and shit <laughs> enough for the commercial but let's go to take a class to be in and around people and i say pay put money down there because guess what when you have put a little bit of skin in the game you are less likely to flake or back out this could be a dance class this could be a jujitsu class it doesn't have to be with a big group this could be with one other person but you putting yourself out there and getting around people that is a huge step and building right off that group exercise that one's really easy to find and here's the thing i love about group exercise you're also hitting the point of moving your body getting the blood going and you feel good you have the endorphins going through the body you're around a group of people people naturally talk especially if you show up the instructor thanks you says as your name all of a sudden you're this is actually true although uh, fuck i hate i hate i hate working out with people i've actually done group cardio classes which uh, fucking wanted to like choke somebody and like everybody's at a different um skill level don't get me wrong but um yeah i fucking hated group exercise um however I do remember when I had my neighbor living upstairs. If you guys have been with the channel long enough, you'll know that I used to have a neighbor that lived upstairs and we used to go to like morning workout sections at uh, Export. And the first few times he was like, oh, you, you know, you, you don't, you don't think I used to manage a motherfucking LA fitness. I was like, okay, so you do every exercise I do. And he was like, I can do that. I was like, you do every exercise I do. I only got an hour to work out, dog. We going to have to motherfucking work this shit out. And the first few times, he was like, oh, 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 okay. It was like, oh, leg press, leg lift, leg extension. But I was like, what are you? he was like, what are you doing? I was like, yeah, I only got an hour to work out. Then I have to take my ass to work. And it was funny because he couldn't keep up with me even though he was Supposedly a fitter guy, supposedly motherfucking um, uh, fucking manager at a LA Fitness. It was just hilarious to me because 
I'm a power lifter or a lifter more than like than say anything. And he was like, oh, oh, that's what's going on. And then like we started riding bikes. He was like, wait a minute, like, why are you riding so far? I was like, we riding bikes. We doing four or five miles. This is just a warm up. And it was just funny because it was like when you exercise the people and they realize maybe you shouldn't judge somebody how they look because of what they exercise. It was just hilarious, but let's go. Recognized, you start spotting, you see you're out shopping, you run into somebody who you've seen 50 times in the gym. They say hello, they acknowledge you. That's how relationships, that's how you build connection. Even if you say nothing, you feel less lonely because you realize how small of a town this is. Yeah, it's New York City, but still you're running in because you're in a borough and you're in an area and you realize I keep seeing the same people. This is pretty cool. Going to a coffee shop. Again, you're putting a little bit of money, maybe get a gift card, buy it for a hundred bucks for yourself so that you will show up there and use it because otherwise you're gonna feel stupid, but you keep going to the same place. You recognize people. Yes, they're captive people that can't escape and don't don't be hitting on the poor girl but you know think you at least you're getting recognized they're starting to acknowledge you and this can help yes yes don't hit on a captive audience unless they hit on you first then you can flirt a little bit but they will always tell you when to stop i'm sorry I'm, okay i with loneliness. All right, Jen, so now I want to share with you the solution I think a lot of people aren't talking about and is solid and will work with everything I just talked about. Now, the solution I'm going to be talking about comes out of behavioral science. And when we look at behavior change, most of us, we start from the outside. We want to change the outcome, then look how we can adjust the process, and maybe we'll get to the identity. What I would encourage you to do, if you want to be less lonely, I would first look at how do you identify yourself, then look at the processes, and finally the outcomes. I identify myself as a lone dark sage. Oh shit um never mind that you want will naturally occur over time so what do i mean by this stop identifying yourself as a lonely person you're not lonely loneliness is a feeling that you occasionally have and you may have it a lot but that does not mean you are a lonely person no instead think of yourself as a disconnected person you just simply aren't connecting with people around you with things around you therefore you are feeling lonely. What we're doing here is we're shifting your identity. If you view yourself as someone that's just disconnected, guess what? You can fix that. You can take steps to become a more connected person. Just the other day, my son, he uh, took our two-year-old daughter uh, to the children's museum. He's 19 years old. But I think it's safe to say that he never felt lonely when he was with her because he was with another person. He was forming that connection. And this is a human being that, yes, he hasn't fully formed cognitively, but think about that because you could have a connection with animals and that would therefore make you less lonely. You can have a connection with nature. Point Okay, okay, okay. So, I hate to say this. But, um, if you're a guy and you have younger siblings, and as long as you don't do nothing, like, bogus or creepy with them, Take their ass places. Please just, just take them places. If you have younger nephews or things like that, take them places. Part of it is to make it seem like you're motherfucking cool because my uncle took me to the park. My uncle took me to the kids' museum. My uncle did this with me. It like as long as you're responsible enough to take them places, even if you're not, even if you're not the most responsible adult. But when you take your younger siblings or your nieces and nephews places, you know what happens? They automatically look up with look up to you. They actually know how to socialize with people. And two, they will, in a lot of cases, they will listen to you more than they will listen to their parents. Because, oh, cool, uncle such and such, auntie such and such took me somewhere and I got to be on my best behavior because my parents, they have to deal with me. My aunties or my brothers, they don't. I, I, I that, Look, my little sister was 12 years younger than me. It's been times where I just like, I, when I was young, I was like, oh yeah, let me take you somewhere just to have my parents not deal with you. And the fact is, I was cool because of that. Now granted, like, did it win me any points with the women no i didn't do it for that i did it because when we got home she listened to me just a little bit more out of not out of all oh, yeah big brothers like no it's just like oh yeah i don't want to piss him off so he won't take me no other place and that my friends is cool i'm sorry i just i just had to say that um secondly 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 um 
Yeah, no, it's that that's cool. Anyway, let's get back to it. The is, is you can connect to anything and you are no longer identifying yourself destined to be a lonely person. No, you're just disconnected and you can take an action to reconnect. So you've changed your identity. All of a sudden you're taking steps in the process and the outcome is all of a sudden you are going to feel more connected. You are going to feel less lonely. And that is the result that we're shooting for. Gentlemen, what video to watch next? Boom. I got you covered with this one right here. Check it out. All right. All right. Yeah. So that was actually interesting. That was actually interesting. And I got my sketch down like I wanted it to. The eyes are a little bit smaller than what I wanted to. I can go back in, always make it a little bit better. But this is like rough draft, mid-draft, and all that other good shit. Um, <clears throat> so what can we say about this video? <coughs> well, it's interesting. Some of the points I definitely didn't agree with. Some of them I did. And um, it, it's interesting. And um, loneliness isn't just a issue that you see with women, a uh, man. It's also something that you see with women as well. And um, we need to just tackle that in our modern society. Yes, um, some of the things that we have, like technology, has made us a little bit more atomized. And we need to actually correct that. But I don't think the banning of social media is one way to fixing that. I also don't think that... Um, the just rapid engagement of having people go in public all the time is actually going to, you know, resolve that. I think it's a mixture of both. And quite frankly, well, quite frankly, it's always been an issue. It's just the technology is always, has always exacerbated it. <coughs> so, all right. Thank you for watching this video and the next one should be popping up on your screen. Subscribe. And if you haven't checked it out and want to help out the channel, check out my Patreon. Thanks.